Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, titanium. Patreon.com slash real macro, patreon.com slash BKC. All right, my new term. This really gets my goat. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's seriously, let's, let's start talking about real economics because this is just really getting out of fucking control. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> I, the, the lunacy that is going around is just, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, so let me let me show you something. Now this this guy Joe, he's a MMT apologist, okay, and uh, he always spreads the the MMT gospel, right? But he's in outer space. He and he works from Bloomberg, okay. Uh, just just to kind of show you how how much of a following this guy has, two hundred seventeen thousand followers, right? That's a lot. <laughs> Right, it's not like my little 700, but he's in outer space, okay? So he says there's like 250 countries in the world, and yet people who rail against the dangers of fiat currency collapse always just talk about Venezuela. Just one country out of 250. Think about that for a second. Right? Is it just Venezuela? Well, <laughs> there isn't, uh, and. The reality is, is 145 nations that have blown up their fucking currency, right? Venezuela is just a shortcut to remind people <laughs> how bad it is uh, when you excessively deficit spend money. Now, I'm not against deficits. Not against it. You can't always run surpluses. Not everybody can always run surpluses and so forth. But there's a there, there's a there's limits. Now, the common stupid answer that you will get from an MMT -er is that, oh, uh, those nations blew up because of foreign denominated debt. What does that mean, foreign denominated? Why did they get into foreign denominated debt to begin with? You see what I'm talking about? You see, MMT is famous, famous for putting the cart ahead of the horse. Doesn't work like that. You have to go one step back and ask, why did these nations, 145 of them, since 1960, so I'm not talking about in history, I'm just talking about since 1960, 60 years. Why did 145, and by the way, there's only 195 nations in the world, okay? Not 250, but he doesn't even know that. Not that it matters, but anyway. Why did 145 currencies in, in the fiat system blow up? You can't just say, well, you know, it's just Venezuela everybody keeps talking about. You're illiterate. And this guy, he's on fucking Bloomberg, educated, right? He's not, he's not some dummy. Uh, it's not like I'm talking to some dude down the road who's just, you know, in outer space. This guy's supposed to know what the hell's going on. Fact check. But he doesn't. Now here's a list of all the nations that have blown up their whole entire currency. And it's in alphabetical order, right? And here's an example, right? You have Angola. 1990, local currency default. What foreign denominated debt? See, the foreign denominated debt, some some nations qualify, some don't. Some uh, blow up, uh, you know, against the, the dollar. Some blow up, whatever. But that's not the problem. That's a symptom. The cause is the local currency blowing up. That's why they end up in foreign currency debt or foreign denominated debt. You understand? Now, these are known uh, currencies that have blown up. We're not even talking about the ones that have devalued to fucking infinity. Forget about them. The Turkish Lira, 7 to 1 to the dollar, used to be 1 to 1. You want to talk about Egypt? Do you want to talk about Ukraine, Russia? See how they've blown up? They didn't default. But do you think that the, the, the savers in those nations, uh, the common people, were like, oh, okay, we didn't blow up. Hey, everything is fine. 
You want to talk about Pakistan, India? You want to talk about these nations? Indonesia? <laughs> Go take a look at Indonesia. 14,000 to 1. Okay? So if you need if you need like to go buy a cup of coffee, it's going to cost you 28,000. Okay? Didn't blow up. It's not on this list. And yet, you have MMT keep pounding the same fucking nonsense day after day, you know, constantly government debt is our savings, you know, no government can ever default in its own currency, bullshit. Okay? There's there's a lot of currencies that have blown up in their own currency a lot and, they, and when they get into foreign denominated debt is because they blew up in their own currency look at all these nations right one after the other one after the other 145 of them and again we're not talking about the ones that are still devaluing to infinity what is Mosley telling you we have a cash famine we have a cash famine Cash famine. We just printed three trillion dollars in three months. Three trillion. If you annualize that, just so you can kind of grasp what I'm talking about, that's twelve trillion dollars annualized. It took us till 2006, okay, 200 years, to get the 10 trillion. And since 2007, till now. We're up to 26 trillion. We added another 16 trillion. Three of those trillion in the past three months. You want to talk about the Fed's balance sheet? We were what 3.8 trillion, and now we're at 7.2 trillion. Let's take a look. And this is not even up to date, All right? This is a, as of June 10th. 7.168 trillion. Where were we? 3.759 trillion. So <laughs> we add another 4.4 in QE buying company debt, okay? And we printed 3 trillion. Think about that. That's what you should be thinking about. Where is unemployment? Right? Where is civilian labor force participation? Look at that. Collapse. Complete collapse. And this goes all the way back to 1950. So, printing works? No. No. Absolutely not. Economies recover when economies recover. The fact that they sit here and they tell you that, oh, look, we printed all this money and we saved the economy is bullshit. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can see it today. It's It's... Black and white. You guys saw this uh, this chart before when I showed it to you in um, uh, in the past video, right? Look at this. The <laughs> stock market is at all time high, at 13% unemployment, which is a bullshit number. But whatever. I, I'm not going to sit here and and deal with it, right? You have 3.4% unemployment here in January, even February, right? And then today we're at 13% unemployment. And, oh, my God, yeah, let's go out and buy stocks because earnings per share are going to grow. Yeah, of course they're going to grow. Because the economy is going to have a V-shaped recovery. Except we're still <laughs> we're still in, 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 in the middle of a recession. And then we hear the nonsense. Well, the market is a forward-looking indicator. It's a forward-looking indicator. What forward-looking indicator? What are you talking about? By that logic, markets should never go down ever again. If you seriously think that you are going, you know, first of all, understand this. United States GDP is 70% of it is consumption. That means that if an American doesn't go out to the mall and buy something every single day, <laughs> like we have been in the past, then the economy cannot sustain that. Okay? That's 70% consumption. So when you have 3.4% unemployment, wages are okay, everybody's making money, everything, you know, is okay, and now you get into this 13% uh, unemployment, and you're saying, well, the market is a forward-looking indicator. Well, how long did it take us for us to, to get to 3.4% unemployment? Remember, we were at 10% in 2008, and it took us over a decade to get to 3.4% unemployment, right? 
you can argue, okay, it was 5% or whatever, you know, four years, maybe eight years later after that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're nowhere near growing earnings per share because consumption is going to rise and wages are going to rise and and, and it's going to translate into earnings per share growth and all this nonsense. That's not why the market is up. And then you have Colin Roach sitting there running, running around saying, why is everybody saying it's asset price inflation? <laughs> that's just that's just stupid. Really? Is it? Let me show you something else. Here's the money supply, the broad base, the M2. Right? And this is every single nation on the planet. This is the U.S. right here. Okay? This is the U.S. right here. As of May, not even June. Okay, we grew our money supply by 23%. You know who our friends around us are? We're number eight in the world, by the way. You know who they are? Venezuela, Zimbabwe, Sudan, Argentina, Angola, my personal favorite, Turkey, Serbia, the Congo, Ukraine, Burundi, Ethiopia. They're even printing less than we are. <laughs> You see, this is the madness of these, you know, MMTers. This is the stupidity of Warren Mosler. Oh, we have a cash famine. We have a cash famine. And an annual, uh, annualized rate of $12 uh, trillion dollars per year. And then you have this, this, this guy over here who's running around. He's like, well, there's like 250 uh, countries in the world, you know. And everybody just keeps talking about Venezuela and fiat. You know, it's stupid. And he doesn't even understand how many currencies have blown up in the world. And we're not even, again, not even talking about Nigeria, 50% devaluation. Kazakhstan, another 50% devaluation when they went off the gold, uh, the dollar standard. Both of those countries. Egypt, the same. You want to talk about Lebanon? Let's talk about Lebanon. 150% debt to GDP and what happened? Poof! The Lebanese pound, which was tied to the dollar, blew up, defaulted. Why did they tie to the dollar? Because they their local currency was finished. So they go and they say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of, you know, tie it to the dollar. We'll use our reserve to keep it balanced. Everything will be okay. You know, we're going to make the reforms. Don't worry about it. We're only printing for the people. And then what happened? Like it always happens. Same thing with every pegged currency. Uh, that that they it's not like the Qatar or UAE that are actually net exporters, right? Japan, same thing, net exporters, and they acquire foreign reserves. These third grade uh, nations, they don't. They don't have the reserves to back it up. So what do they do? Yeah, just give us this one last chance. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix it all up. We're gonna do what's right. We're gonna tax. We're gonna start exporting. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. And then what do they do? Poof! They blow up. How many? 145 of them since 1960. Right? And then they're going to they're gonna pass you off this book here. Oh, it's a, the deficit is a myth. It's a myth. Yes. Stephanie Kelton, it's a myth. This is an economist with a PhD. I'm supposed to sit here and say she's an economist. She doesn't know her ass uh, from her elbow. And then, of course, you're going to get... <laughs> you're going to get the MMT here, right? The little parakeet. Well, you know, it's a... Uh, uh, every one of those countries had bad debts in foreign currency. <laughs> right? The expert now. The expert is going to come and tell me. <laughs> even after I showed them, even after I showed them how many currencies have blown up. <laughs> I can't, man. I can't. I want to pull my hair out. So here's another way to look at reality and not this stupid insanity when you divide gross domestic product into the federal debt okay the public debt you're going to find out very quickly that for every dollar that is now being created you're getting less and less and less and less and less gdp growth why why does this happen because those dollars are not are not going to the productive 95% of the economy where you and I exist. 
those dollars end up in savings for the top 5%, the corporations. What do they do with all those excessive, excessive deficits? The QE, the repos, the whatever, the lower interest rates. What do they do with those dollars? You think they invest it back into the functional productive economy so we can make the economy better and bigger? No. They take those dollars in savings, they run out, and they buy stocks and bonds, chasing yield. And then what happens to the productive economy? Well, they're starving of dollars. So MT comes around and says, oh, well, we, we found the solution. Just print more and let the government sit there and keep pumping dollars into the productive economy. And then that those dollars in the productive economy can just go off into the savers so they can keep out, keep going out and buying uh, more and more stocks and bonds and real estate and commodities and whatever. Making them richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. And then you're getting poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. Because your wages cannot, your wages cannot keep up with the speed of deficits. It's, it's not possible. The economy cannot grow at that speed as deficits. It's not possible. So despite the facts, math, and data, the evidence that's right in front of you, that shows the more money you print does not mean higher GDP, does not mean higher wages. It only means higher stock prices. It's right in front of you. You can see it. You're getting less and less and less and less and less GDP. And yet, what's the solution? Oh, we need to print more. We need to buy those companies that are going to go out of business. They're going to go bankrupt. We need to do that for the people. Always for the people. Except for the fact that the people are not unemployed and it does nothing for them does nothing. Now I just showed you how the money supply is growing at the rate of, <laughs> you know, with our little buddies Angola. And what is it, what about velocity of money? What is velocity of money? Money is the, the broad base, let's say M2, not let's say, some, some people use different measurements, but it's M2 divided by GDP. Uh, that's it. It's, it's that simple. Or actually GDP divided by uh, M2. Okay, and, and where do you see the velocity of money? Falling. Falling. Why is it falling? Why is it not producing more economics, uh, growth, economic growth? Why is it not doing that? Because those dollars are in savings, and those savings are going into asset prices. You understand? When you create a dollar, it's like water. Okay, it's got to go somewhere. So where does it end up? Does it end up with you and me? No. Because if we had $26 trillion of savings between you and me, <laughs> we would not be bitching and everything would be great. And believe me, there would be no, no recession. Okay? So those dollars, that $26 trillion, has to go somewhere. It always goes somewhere. It can't just evaporate. So where does it go? It goes with the th top 5%. That's where it goes. All right? And they're using the excuse that, well, they're saving too much, so we just have to print more. Yeah, the more you print, the more they save. It's not the more we save. And that's why when Kelton says, government debt equals our savings, our, quote, our savings. Who's our? It's not us. And this is what I've been saying uh, for a very long time, even with pure MMT, that that's garbage. It's not true. The dollars end up in the top 5%. The liabilities of those deficits are the 95%. Okay? You, you don't understand that? Well, go take a look at Cyprus. What happened when they needed to, uh, uh, to reduce the deficit? What happened? Anybody that had any money above $100,000 in the bank lost it overnight. That's it. Poof. Bye-bye. You just sold the business just sold the house, whatever, you just put it in the bank, well, they just came in and confiscated it. Whose liability? It's our liability. Who's getting taxed to pay down the debt in Greece? Top 5% or the 95%? So you understand what I'm saying to you now. It's our liabilities, and it's their savings. 
not ours. So MMT, w what they're doing is they're getting you to agree to deficits that it's just a myth. Economies don't blow up. It's just a myth. Okay? To agree to deficits thinking that it's good for you. And you just received whatever, for those of you who aren't employed or whatever, the stimulus check for $600 or whatever, right? They just gave it to you thinking, oh my God, this is great. You know, I'm going to get $600. <laughs> Meanwhile, zombie companies are getting trillions of dollars. Trillions. A trillion so far. I don't know how else to explain this. <laughs> Nobody's outraged. Nobody's freaking out about what's going on. Nobody cares what looting is going on of America. They're just worried about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, not realizing what's going on. And I get it. I do. I, I understand that they, d they don't understand the monetary system and they don't understand macroeconomics. They don't understand stock markets and finance and so forth. I do. I, I understand that. But I'm explaining to you in very simple terms. I'm showing you the evidence right in front of your eyes. It's time to start caring. It really is. Time to start caring. Because this is way out of control. Alright guys, take care. Bye-bye.